Hello, React Native developers. Welcome to Can It Be Done in React Native. In this episode, we make our scroll views a little bit less boring and way more stylish. Happy New Year, guys. William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. In this week's episode, we are looking at the Chanel Fashion app, and more specifically, this beautiful scrolling effect. So we can scroll through items like this, and the sizes changes, and there is also some opacity animation on the card. This example was suggested by a subscriber of the show, and it immediately caught my curiosity. How would we do this in React Native? And I'm pretty excited to present it to you because this is a simple effect to implement that can really improve the overall uh, look and feel of your app. To me, this is the biggest uh, bang for your buck, such a simple effect to implement in React Native, but that tremendously improves the look and feel of your app. And for good measure, I'm going to show you two ways of doing it. So how we do this in React Native? Well, we clearly have a square view and we animate the height of the items. And you can see that we interpolate from two heights, mean height, which is the height of the item you see at the bottom, and max height, which is the height of the item that you see at the top. And the interpolation is fairly easy to do. You see here we have item at index zero and the scroll value is zero, so it has max height. Here we scroll by max height, right? There is one item at the top, which we cannot see anymore. And it's item at index one. So we have minus, max eight. Index two, we have minus two times max eight, right? There are two um, items at the top and so on. And then we can also interpolate the opacity of the title. So you see here, for instance, Le Chateau des Dames Show. So we just, between these two height values, interpolate the opacity. And then you can see that when I release the gesture, there is always an item that ends up at the top. And you are going to use a snap to interval in order to do that. Because we animate the height of the items dynamically, um, the scroll view is not going to be able to calculate the intervals properly. So we're going to set a fixed height for the container, which is going to be the total number of items here minus max height. So we can still see one at the top. And then I'm going to show you a way to implement this example using the pan gesture handler. The reason is that the scroll view is giving us a lot of things for free. So if we can use the square view, we should because it makes life much easier. But sometimes for more complex use cases, we cannot get away with using the square view. And if this happens, I don't want you to be intimidated. I'm going to show you a simple way to do such an example with the pan gesture handler. But what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. Before we jump into VS Code, one thing, if you're interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I hope that you will check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run Access CFPS even on low-end devices. So if you're interested to learn the fundamentals, I hope that you will check it out at startreactnative.dev. We are into VS Code now, and I have this boilerplate project, which is a simply a scroll view with a couple of items. And there are no animations on the height of the items. And I think the first thing we're going to do is to bind a Y animation value to the scroll view. So we know the scroll value on the UI thread, and then use this value to interpolate the height and the opacity of the title. And then we're going to add the snap to interval so we can nicely snap always to the top of the current item. And then I'm going to show you the second solution using the pan gesture handler. So let's get started. We know that we need the uh, Y animation value. So use shared value from reanimated to the one and only. And so this square view is going to become an animated square view. And we need to assign the on scroll event, so which I'm going to create here. And we are going to use use animated scroll handler. And the event we're interested in is 
on scroll. And I think, yeah, it looks like this content of set and the Y value. So here I'm going to rename it to not clash and I'm going to call it value. So Y dot value equals value. So now let me import these things here. And here we should add scroll, no, sorry, throttle. So I'm, I'm not sure what's the name of um, scroll event throttle, yes. To, so we want to catch really all events. So here you can put one or 16. You can put 16, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so here we should have the Y scroll value available to, to us on the UI thread. And yeah, let's uh, let's see if we if it works. So we're gonna try to change the height of the item depending on the Y value. So I'm gonna pass now Y as property. And as we discussed in the introduction, we're gonna interpolate the height based on the index. So I'm gonna pass also the index as a property. So now let me do the typing quickly. So we have Y, which is an animated shared value. and index, which is a number. So we have Y index, oops. Okay. <clears throat> and here we have our container, which is gonna become an animated view because we animate the height of the container. And we're gonna create an animated style called container. container equals use animated style and we return height so we interpolate on y dot value so the input range depends on the index and so we're going to have when it's at the top the scrolling value is index time max 8 so here we have the two values we need to interpolate from min 8 and max 8 so I took two random values here half of the screen and 128. You can use any values you, you want. And then it's at mean when the scroll value is at index minus one. And so I'm gonna here change the order to have it in ascending order. And so when we have index minus one, we are at mean height. And when we're at the top, we're at max height. And we want to extrapolate clamp. So we don't go above and below these two values. So extrapolate clamp. Let's have a look. So we see the item at the top here has max height. The item below have mean height. And I can scroll. It interpolates nicely. Now, because we move these heights dynamically, we always change the height of the square view container, which is, I think, not very good. So we should really have a fixed container height, depending no matter of, you know, how we scroll. So here in content container style, we can do height equals, and we said in the introduction, number of items times max height minus one. So we always see the one at the top. So I want to do items length minus one times max height. So here we scroll nicely. Um, hmm, no interesting, is it plus one actually? No, so that works. Now we can quickly animate on the opacity of the text and then we're gonna add the snap to interval. So we, if we go back to the item here, this one that contains the title, we can transform into an animated view. I'm going to create an animated style called title style. Use animated style and we animate on opacity. The interpolation range is exactly the same than for height. When we're at mid height, we're at zero. When we're at max height, we are at one. And I could factorize the input range here.
and we can add the snap to interval, especially now that we have the content container style that is fixed. The snap interval will work always. Snap to interval, which is max height. And I know already that I need to use the deceleration rate, but let's have a look. So here, now you see you end up always at the top, but it's actually pretty slow. And so here we're going to use deceleration rate fast. So it happens quickly like on the channel app. And so you see now here it happens super quick. Isn't that cool? I think it's a really fun example that was so simple to implement. Biggest bang for your buck. And now I would like to show you a way to do it with the pan gesture handler. Just so that if you want to implement maybe a more complex example where you cannot use the scroll view in order to do it. Uh, I don't want you to be intimidated. Uh, we're going to implement this quickly with the pan gesture handler. So I'm going to remove the scroll view. And I'm going to use the pan gesture handler instead. And you guys know the drill. The pan gesture handler first and unique child is an animated view. And we need to create the on gesture event. And again, here for the on gesture event, it's always the same thing. On start, we keep into the context the scrolling value, so it's our offset. On active, we use the context, so we add the offset to the translation X. And on end, we are going to snap somewhere. It's always the same recipe over and over again. So let's do it. So no more on scroll. The Y value we keep. So on gesture event, use animated scroll handler. And we know about the Y offset value that we need. So let me, oh, sorry. Use animated gesture handler. Okay. And we need to set the context here where we're going to store our offset, the type. And so here I need the default type here. And so we have an offset Y. Okay. So on start, we keep the offset value. So we do context.y is equals y.value. So we will remember where we are. And that allows us to remember across gestures, also to make the gesture interruptible. When we start, we remember where we are. On active, we calculate the value. So we have translation y, the context, and we know that y.value equals context.y plus translation y. And maybe before doing the spring, let's see if it works. So this does not work at all. If we go here, so, so now we need to translate the items, which the scroll view was doing for us automatically. And here, usually we would use translate Y. This time I'm going to use top because we animate the height and I want the height and translation to be animated under the same schedule. So this one, this animation, because it's the height, uh, goes through the UI manager because it might change the layout, the overall layout, where everything that transform runs is completely hardware accelerated. It doesn't, it doesn't have any influence over the flex layout. And so I don't want, um, these two animations should be, the height and the scroll should be completely uh, synchronized. So I don't want any, uh, I don't want a different schedule for these few properties. So I'm going to use the top y.value. And here we assume because we use the scroll value, the value was positive. But actually now we get the opposite value uh, from the pan gesture handler. We get a negative value. So I'm going to invert it here and here. Let's have a look. So it animates nicely. Perfect. But now we need to snap. And we need to, you see, we need to clamp also the value. So on end, we need to find, so I'm going to get the velocity. Uh, oops, velocity Y. I'm going to rename it to velocity. And we need to find out where we snap. We use redash for that. There is a snap point function, which calculates based on the value and the velocity 
where uh, would be the position in 200 milliseconds and then select the closest um, point and that gives you the destination. So destination equals snap point from redash. So value is y dot value, velocity and snap points. The snap points, we know what they are. We take the items, we map over the items, we take the index, and it's my uh, yeah index minus max height, right? We would have zero minus max height minus two max height and so on. So this is our destination, and we can spring to it nicely. So with spring to destination, we can add the velocity to the config. And here we have this nice spring animation. It's way more bouncy than with the square view. Maybe one thing we can do is, I mean, we, we could change the spring config. I can do a small change here is to add overshoot clamping false, true. We want to clamp the overshooting values. Looks good, I like it. And you see, now we need to add the clamping. So we're gonna clamp here. We know the maximum value is zero and the minimum value I'm tempted to do, we know that it's uh, minus items length minus one times max height. Let's see, I'm not 100% sure, but let's try this. Clamp is provided to us by Redash. So let's have a look. So here I can scroll to the top and same at the bottom, perfectly clamped. Isn't that cool? Guys, I hope you enjoyed this example, a simple effect to implement, but that can tremendously improve the overall look and feel of your app. And I've shown you two ways of doing it. One using the scroll view, which is super simple to do. And one using the Pandesha handler, a little bit more complex, but that gives you a little bit more freedom in case you want to make things even more sophisticated and going beyond the uh, scroll view use cases. Let me know what you think in the comment below. I'm looking forward to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy hacking.